Özgün here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna make a remake and I'm gonna show you how I approach when I try to make a Trex remake. And for this, we are gonna take a look of Saber's Kevu Dream Team track. But before we get into the video, let's choose the discount code winners from Lab Recording Volume 1 Sample Pack by Ilkay Sanjan. So I have a comment picker website. It's the first time I'm using it. So I just paste the video here and click get YouTube comments. So we have 36 comments, individual 36 comments. Let's choose the first winner who get the 50% discount. So Gaber, you are the first winner. So you get the 50% discount. I'm gonna write a reply to your comments as well. So let's pick two more people who get 25% discounts. Here us, so you are the second winner and let's go one more. And Honor Günaydı, you are the third winner to get the discount for the pack. So congratulations guys, please send me an email and I'm gonna give you the discount codes. So if you're ready, let's get into that tutorial. So when I'm making remakes, I always put the original track first to the top and I just get rid of the other parts. So now we have the drop. I'm gonna uh, lock it like this by clicking Alt Shift and click. It's gonna lock it so I'm gonna use it when I need it. And secondly, I always use like this. I send the reference track to some channel, dock to left, and I remove it from here. So it's not gonna go to the master. Instead, I'm just turning on the outputs manually. So this is now a separate master. So I can just re rename it as reference so and even lock it. I always try to balance my track to the reference track by using span like this. I'm gonna just mute it, but I can see the span in here. So it's really nice way to get a reference track so you can copy the balances, you can examine what they do in certain parts how they low end look like if you want to just see their low end you can just put some eq and cut the highs like this and in the span you will see the low end of the reference track so you can just take a look of yours look at that compare a and b it's really useful i always use references like this so okay let's start with the kick i'm gonna use this kick it's from Kevo Sample Pack. It's really close to the track. And I really like the punch and the transient of it. It's really looking nice. So our kick pattern should be like this. And for the sub bass, I'm gonna use another Kivu kick from Kivu Sample Pack. So the track was in F. That's why I'm using an F kick. When I'm making remakes, I'm, I try to use samples from the producers itself. You can get really close. Okay, let's send this one to a separate channel, call it sub, and let's give it some side chain and also an EQ to cut the highs. Let's cut it from F because it's probably we are not gonna climb more than F. Bam, bam, bam. Maybe in the end part of the drop, there's some move, but we will see. Okay, let's send it to the next channel. Call it kick. And also let's put a um, wave candy to monitor the levels. It's always helped. So when I first start remaking the track, it's best to do it like this. Cut it like maybe here. And let's copy exact same to our track and go to the span. And let's compare and like match the balances.
It's already balanced. If you use the samples from the same sample pack, probably you will get balanced and matched good samples at the result. So we are really close. I don't want to get into too deeply on the processings of them. So let's uh, finish the baseline notes in here. We are going something like this. So original track making, bam, bam, bam. So again, you can go to the reference and you can put G-Tune, which is a free plugin. After cutting it, G-Tune is going to tell exact uh, correct note. G, C, D. Let's do it. This should be G sharp. So three up. Now we have to go back to C sharp. So 400. No, no, I think we have to go more. Let's see. I think they are making one octave high, like uh, this. Yeah. And then it should be two down. Yeah, like this. Sounds nice. Let's copy the same pattern like this. And I hear in the original track, they have a really solid mid bass. So I just needed to find some bass sample. Find this from EDM Vengeance pack. I think they are using some other specific sound, but this is really close, I think, and we can make it work. So let's send it to a separate channel. This time we don't need to cut it too sharp. Maybe this or this should work. Let's see. And first, let's make the exact notes for this one as well. Let's make it unique. Three up. Make it unique. 800 up. And two down. Make unique. Two down. And let's copy. So I'm gonna distort it a bit even more. And after that, we can just cut the lows, cut the highs. And also we can just put some uh, fruity balance to here and we can automate it to make it more in the mix. Let's create some automation to it. Lock the automation. I think we can do something like this. And I'm just gonna duplicate this guy like all over the place. And in the original track, especially in this exact part, uh, we have some automation on the bass. Let's make it a uh, 12 and choose stretch. Then we can just create some automation clip for this. I think it's something like this. Maybe even like this. Mm -hmm. This should work, but we have to connect the same automation to this sample as well. Make it 12, make the stretch and then link to controller and choose the one that we just created. Okay, automations. If bugged like this, you can just put the default in its position to the certain part. Okay, kick and bass, I'm really satisfied with it now. Let's continue. 
So for the leads, I'm gonna use silent because I think I know some of the sounds that are using in the track. So let's send this one to a separate channel and it's best to call it lead one because I'm gonna use three more layers and we can create some lead group in here and let's root it like this, create a separator. Now we are good. So first sound is this one. I'm gonna saturate it a bit. It's some hard style lead and also I have the MIDI of this. Let's import it. I made the MIDI before I start the video not to lose so much time trying to find the correct notes. I'm gonna make the generic processing for the delay and reverb. Let's do it like this. So let's clone this. We need some more crispy and more distorted layers. I'm gonna use this sound as my second sound, send it to a separate channel and do the same processing as well, call it lead 2. This sound is giving the character to the leads and I think they use this one in the track too. At least this one is really close. And maybe we can just uh, clone this one and layer one more sound to get a bit more, to feel a bit more frequencies in the spectrum. Let's copy and paste it like this. And I'm gonna use this generic lead from Vandalism Sample Pack. It's a really old lead fitting so well in this kind of sound. <laughs> And don't forget to match the mono legato mods as well to get a more glued sound. I'm gonna lower the volumes to get some headroom. And let's clone one more time. And I'm gonna use this lead for my uh, answer layer. So let's import the media. I'm gonna send it to same channel, like same routing. They should affect it from same reverb. That's why they are gonna glue it well and they will be in one room, if it makes sense. But I'm gonna saturate it a bit. Maybe I can use normal tech character since it makes the top end really crispy. So let's go techno synth from here. <laughs>
Yes, we are almost there. Let's uh, delete the fill parts. Recently, I start using this Arturia delay plugin. It's just amazing. Maybe we can go to the basic ping pong. And also, I'm gonna sidechain my delay and reverb. Let's add the fruity peak controller. I'm gonna make it fast because in almost my every video, I'm using this technique. So I'm gonna choose invert like this. So let's add some EQ to give some body to the leads. I think they are lacking some of the body. So we can just boost like this. And maybe from a bit here. Give some starry image as well. Let's start with the steps. I'm gonna use this saber step. <laughs> thing I'm gonna do to sidechain it a bit. Also I think our leads are too tight. Let's make it a bit slow. So let's get rid of the low end of the steps. It's just clashing with everything. And I have one more layer like this. They have so similar characteristics, so why not? We can just layer them like this. And I'm gonna bring this drop crash from Cyber Spec. And I'm choosing the cut itself from here. So uh, in here, the crashes are overlapping. It, if you choose cut self, so it's not gonna overlap. When it's playing again, the previous one is gonna mute it. So you don't need to make it like this and Edit your samples if you just choose cut cell. we can just put this crowd noises they are really fitting this kind of big room drops you can hear it probably from every big room track so we 
have to use some clubs as well in this part. In meantime, I'm just checking A, B and see which parts do I missing. I'm listening to the original track and I'm listening to my track. Then I, I see, oh yeah, they have some sound like this. Do I have some similar sound? If I have, I just put it. If I don't have, I put some sound. I search for the sound, exact sound since I get close enough. I'm not gonna try to find the exact same sound because it's a remake and it's a bit my approach to the track. That's why it's like make, remaking a track. All the process is fun, so vibe with it and have fun with it. It's the most important thing when making music, I think. So let's put it to the BPM. And also I I hear some sound like this, not this sound, but some sound like this. So I'm gonna use this one, it's the closest sound that I have. So it's 128 BPM and probably we have to pitch it like this. So in the second part, I'm hearing some of the hi-hats. So I decided to use this hi-hat from Kevo Sample Pack. And we have to make the timing it. So it's 128. I think we can use it like this to make it a bit more simple. And I hear some clicking sounds because of the cutting. So if you choose generic, you will get rid of that annoying sound. And okay, let's go to the toms. I have a sound like this. It's F sharp from Vengeance Pack. Let's make it F and let's get rid of the lows. And I'm gonna sidechain it to be more tight. So we need some sweep downs as well. Let's put it to some channel and sidechain it. Not 100%. Let's finally fix the fills. I find these samples. I think this is the exact one. So let's uh, put it to the BPM like this. Don't resample it. It's gonna change the key. So keep it in E3, one of the E3 modes. Let's get rid of this. And put this. So, okay, I'm gonna use it like this. Just this, those parts. Okay, guys, so let's listen what we have. But before we go to do listening, I think I can just put some maximizer to get a bit glued results. I'm just going to boost it several dBs. That's all. The dream. Okay, let's listen what we got. The dream team.
I think we are close enough. Yes, definitely we have to mix it properly to get a more close, more similar result. But for the sake of this tutorial, I hope you learn how I approach making it remain. For copyright reasons, I needed to cut the parts that I listening to the original track, but I always make A, B compare and see what they have in that specific certain part. And I check mine and I try to find samples in less than half an hour. You can make a remake like this really fastly, really easily. And I hope you can apply this to your own productions too. Thanks for watching guys. See you on the next video. Bye bye.